we go. It's Friday, and I want to know what's on your mind. This is a show about real people, real issues, having a real conversation every Friday. So with that said, we'll go ahead and um, get you guys to introduce yourself. So introduce your, who you are and what you're currently doing. Anyone can jump in. Uh, my name is Vanessa Abram. Many know me as a public relations professional. I've been working in the industry for about 15 years, starting with working with agencies within the city of Chicago, like Weber Shanwick and Helen Elton, transitioned to working um, in-house at Johnson Publishing Company when it then had Ebony Jett and Fashion Fair, mm -hmm. um, then to Nielsen, and now I am independent. Um, I've been independent for the past five years. I can't believe it. Um, and I work with a variety of different clients in various um, verticals and industries, um, whether it's media relations, um, event production, content development, social media strategy, and things of that nature. Right now, I host a weekly, excuse me, a monthly um, office hours where for one hour I'm available the last Wednesday of the month where I answer anyone's PR questions. And that was really something that I offered uh, for small business owners, um, especially right after um, with the movement of Black Lives Matter, um, lots of protests, lots of businesses going out of, um, lots of businesses losing traction due to COVID-19 and things of that nature. So that was the one thing that I felt that I can contribute without overexerting myself. <laughs> Wonderful. Girl, I'm going to have to pick your brain a little bit further after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, EJ, you're up next. Hi. So I'm Emerald Jane Hunter. I go by EJ. And I got my start in the television industry. So I worked in television for 15 years before pivoting into integrated marketing. And my years in TV has been spent doing everything from fetching coffee on set all the way to actually creating content myself. So before uh, my last five years where I did a lot of work with a local uh, talk show, I actually had a, an entertainment, weekly entertainment show on NBC that I had sold the idea to and actually ran. So I have that experience that runs the gamut. Um, by year 15, raising kids and a family, I had to take a look at where my priorities lie and um, just getting burnt out from the, the crazy world of TV. I don't know why I thought PR was going to be less, <laughs> <laughs> anything less than that, but I did a short stint at a local PR agency here and it gave me a good insight into just how hectic that PR world is. But my true passion is really driven by purpose, right? My I now work in integrated marketing space where um, it's not just PR and marketing, but it's really mixing the world of um, PR, media relations, social media, influencer marketing, and content creation as well, where it's that holistic story that you're telling, but really focusing on working with purpose-driven brands. So I work with a mix of brands in the organic and natural space. That's really my niche and my focus because anything that's people and planet over profit that, that has my heart. And I work with a very select hand, uh, hand um, I select few nonprofit organizations that tug at my heart too. And I nonprofit for me is where, where all the change is, right? And they always don't have the budget to support to make um, the, that change and get that impact. And so being able to use my brain power to help them is something that also has my power. But I, um, being able to work on my own schedule and spend time with my children who are growing up. My daughter is going to be 14 next week. And I have a 10-year-old son. And she's going to high school. Really, the purpose behind all of this was to be able to spend time with them so I didn't miss out on these uh, precious years, but also having them being part of my business. My daughter works in my shipping department and really to be an example for my kids. Um, I'm an immigrant, originally from Ghana, West Africa. I migrated here 21 years ago. So I haven't been here that long. And um, I just, I'm very passionate about my work. I'm, um, yeah, so... Thanks for having me. Wow. Well, do you think it's okay for a person to culturally impersonate someone in order to get financial benefits? The word impersonating alone comes with a no, unless you're in the 
entertainment field, right? Where it's right. just to make money, where it's we're paying to come sit down for the exchanges, we're having a good laugh, right? Mm -hmm. But anything outside of that, no. <laughs> I think. Let's let's take Rachel. I don't know who this other woman is. Let's take mm -hmm. Rachel for example. Like I feel like Rachel could have been very pivotal. Like I think it's very important to have allies, um, cultural allies. I think it's important for us to um, have those who advocate toward towards their segment, you know, on our behalf and things like that. Have those tough conversations with their peers and things like that. I think that's really important. But I think you can do that without imitating or in, without, you know, identifying as something that you're not. Um, it's, it's disrespectful. Um, and Absolutely. It's totally it's just, disrespectful. It's just disrespectful. But right. you, I feel like if you are that passionate, mm -hmm. then just be an ally. Just be an ally, be an advocate, mm -hmm. you know, help out where you can, be a part of the community, donate resources, donate time you know, donate, you know, experience. Like if you're a lawyer, you have legal experience, you know, bring right. that to the table. If you are a teacher and you have educational resources, bring that to the table. But you can be a part of the culture and be an ally without impersonating. Absolutely. I, 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 I want to pick their brain and, and really sit down and try to get in there. It's like, what, what is it for you to do that? I mean, what is going on? You know, what I found, mm -hmm. No, so I was going to say that's that's one of the, the problems about, well, I wouldn't say problems, but let's let's I'm going to take it back a little bit to the Black Lives Matter movement. Right. Mm -hmm. And because yeah. this this movement, for some reason, this time around brought up a lot of conversations. And one of the things that um, has been very clear is, is that black culture is the one culture where when it's celebrated, other cultures take our culture yes. and make it this thing that then causes it to then be celebrated. But whenever the conversation is being had about Black culture and Black Lives Matter, it's about the struggle and the pain. Mm -hmm. But it's never about the celebration right. of our culture and what we bring. Black joy, Black love, Black you know, excellence, Black whatever. But it's always, always, we see our culture just gets taken, flipped and switched around and used in every single- And industry. diluted. It's and diluted. diluted. Right? Then, yeah. then yeah. is yeah. it celebrated. But it's right. never celebrated on its own. Like, when are we going to get a bunch of white people that are going to be like, I'm not going to do the black culture thing, but I'm going to be here and celebrate it as an ally, mm -hmm. like you said, right? But they always have to take a bit of it in order to add to that celebration. Like I'm still waiting to find ways in which black culture is truly celebrated for what it is without a level of, you know, impersonation right. or cultural right. misappropriation, right? Celebrate us, but let right. us be us. Don't insert yourself into us in order to celebrate us. You can be you and celebrate us still. Absolutely. You know? I think impersonation becomes a problem if it doesn't have that consistent positive kind of uh, positive side effect that comes with it. Mm -hmm. you know? if you're going to impersonate and you're going to love the culture, then love it top. Authentically, to just right. just authentically, just love it because you love it. You know, you don't have to impersonate it. Right. And then what happens is that when they do take the appropriation and then not give credit, this which is an oh. issue, yeah. then they not then they don't give credit to where it comes from. So then their peers who live in small town America where there's no people of color to um say to say like, Oh, this came from blah blah blah. They think, Oh, this person started it. This right. is the originator. For example, people are still saying Bo Derek braids. Like how I know. Is that still I know. I mean, the correction is just unbelievable. You it, know, so it's like that. It's important because it's like when you do that, and no one else knows where you got it from, then they take it as you are the originator. So it's like when we had to create research papers in school, mm -hmm. we had to have a reference sheet in the back that says exactly. we took this information from blah blah blah. 
even yeah. in media, if you're borrowing content or, you know, any sort of information, you have to credit where you're getting this content for, from. So when you're appropriating, with, or if you're, if, I'm not going to say appropriate, if you're being influenced by something, say why you're being influenced by something and where you're being influenced by something. It is, why does our society not value teachers and other essential workers to be paid a living wage? Hmm. Oh, EJ, you're a mother. You can see it. I'm sure you feel it. <laughs> you know, I was having I was having a conversation um, yesterday with mm -hmm. my family. So my two kids, my husband at the dining at the kitchen table, and I, I'm gonna take it. I'm going to take it as I'm going to broaden the scope and then see if maybe we can narrow, narrow laser focus into the teacher part. But my conversation with my family was about America in general mm. and how we look at this pandemic now and how this yeah. pandemic is really revealing a lot of what we've always known, oh. mm -hmm. but now the world is seeing it. Yes. And for me, what I'm seeing as what we lack as a people in America mm. is empathy. Mm. We don't know how to feel for somebody else if we can't feel it for ourselves. We don't know how to get out of ourselves to think this person is in a situation that I don't understand, but for the fact that they're my human brother and sister, I'm gonna be supportive. We are having discussions about why people should put masks on or not. The simple, simple, your brother or your sister needs to be protected against this pandemic. Put it on because it will protect you, but more so it will protect them. Yeah. But we are so focused on our rights and our amendments, and we're very we, 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 we. We're so individualistic. I have family that live in Switzerland, and I was speaking to them when the pandemic started. And I was like, how are you guys doing? Like, how's everything going? She's like, we trust our government. We listen to our government. We don't panic. They tell us what to do. We go, okay, and we do it. So we're fine. Wow. You look at New Zealand that ha now has yeah. gone over 100 days with no cases. I bet you people were like, okay, I need to put on a mask. You need to put on a mask. Okay, that's what, that's, you mean that's all we got to do? to care about each other, okay. Exactly. So that's the wider picture of where I see the general lack is. Because this country is so founded on rights, which is important too, but mm -hmm. we take that right so personally that we forget that the right is also the right for our human brothers and sisters. Next and it's question. not just exactly. your selfish right. Yeah. So that's the general umbrella in which I started to think about everything to say, you mm -hmm. know, in, in why people are, 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 why there's even a debate about why you should put it, like it makes no sense, put, put it on. So let's laser focus into teachers and those who care for us. Actually, let me, before I even go there, let's go into the welfare system because I'm like all fired up about this, okay? The people who have and have never had to deal with welfare or have to get any kind of government help will be the first to stand in line and condemn it and condemn it and da, 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 gotta get rid of it. When stimulus checks came, did those people say no to the stimulus check? Everybody got a stimulus check and if they didn't get it, they complained. Guess what? That was a handout. The same handout that yeah. others were getting that you complained about, now that you are in that boat, yeah. suddenly, oh yeah, stimulus checks, that's great, we're all getting it. We don't practice empathy at all. We don't know how to say, you know what? I'm going to take myself out of the equation. And for the sake of my brother and sister, I'm just going to do it. We don't. So when you come to teachers and frontline workers, we don't care about anybody but ourselves because we're so selfish until you need somebody to save your life, until mm -hmm. you need to sit with your kids and teach them algebra, which you're like, what is this? Then do you start to have value for people? But as a people and as a country, I really wish we could find a way to rework our minds to find a way to be empathetic. It's so, and now more than ever, I think it's like out the door <laughs> from the top well, I, down. <laughs> yeah. I, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I agree totally.
totally. I'm that friend. I'm that woo woo energy reading friend that, you know, I'm that girl, right? Yeah. Sometimes I, have I, a I, I, I'm that too. <laughs> and sometimes have a conspiracy theory. I'm not going to say it's a conspiracy theory, but also to add on to what EJ just said, I think it's a step further than that. I do think it's systematic. So when you think about the teachers who are not getting paid a livable wage, it's usually teachers that are in certain communities, certain school systems, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's on purpose. I feel like I had this conversation on my um, Facebook page and Instagram not too long ago where mm -hmm. when you look about, when you look at, let's take, let's take in Chicago right now, there's a lot of looting, right? And there's, and, and, and everyone has their debates about it. My opinion is if you want to correct criminal activity in certain communities, you have to give them resources to be active citizens. So if you have people in certain communities who don't have access to great education, who don't have access to good health care, whether it be mental or physical, mm -hmm. have access to grocery stores, yes. like it's a, it, it's a breakdown of the human being. Mm -hmm. So now that human being isn't acting in a way that you think that they should act or the logical way because they are in environments that's not conducive to them being great citizens. It's just not going to happen. So I also feel like part of it, and like I said, this is the conspiracy theory to me, is like I feel like part of it is, okay, don't pay teachers well, so teachers are not going to do an adequate job. Right. So if the teachers don't do an adequate job, then we're thus making sure that these communities aren't getting the education that they need so they can be viable citizens. Like I feel like and it's, it's a domino effect. It's yeah, a like, domino I feel effect. Like, yeah, like I feel like it's on purpose. I, I definitely think it's not, it's not, it is no way in the world that people can be logical and say, oh, that, I mean, that's not it. I, they know exactly what they're doing. I feel like they know exactly what they're doing and they're telling this dumb story like, oh, that's not what it is. It's just that we don't have enough blah, blah, blah. It's whatever excuse in the world that we can find, that they can find. Mm -hmm. to to justify because when they justify okay you, this is the community you're in figure it out and some people do figure it out but it's very hard for the masses to figure it out on their own without the resources needed so it's like you figure it out and so then it's like they know that if they don't have the resources that they're not going to be viable citizens and that is just and that is thus the reason they act like that they act the way they act so they can point their fingers and say see look they're savages they don't know how to act so now we got to put them in jail. Now we got to put the police in their neighborhoods. Like, I feel like it's a domino effect that was done on purpose. Well, I was, I was also going to say something about value and, 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 and it and also comes to the capitalism system. Um, there, there are jobs, certain jobs that are the civil, civil, civil servant jobs, right? Mm -hmm. So in Ghana, where I'm from, a doctor doesn't earn the most money. In America, doctors earn a lot of money, right? In Ghana, if you choose to become a doctor, you are of service. You're going in there not to be the richest person. On the richest people are entrepreneurs and business people who are running their own business and making the deals and you know. But if you're a teacher or a doctor, you are there to serve. And I think it comes to the value, it comes down to the value system too, right? So I think a lot of teachers and I can't speak for every teacher, but the few good ones that I know um, would say they're very passionate about the work. They just want to feel valued. And in America, the value comes in the dollars and cents. Because if you're struggling to pay your regular bills or to have a comfortable life for your family, it takes away the passion that you have to serve. And really being a teacher is a service. Like the teachers are the foundation of adulthood because one bad teacher will break you for the rest of your life. One good teacher will impact you in a way where you'll never forget, right? So I think it comes down to the value system as well and changing our mindset about certain careers and jobs and why we're doing them. Right. But we live in a country where dollars and cents also rules things. So the few who choose not to go there because solely because of dollars and cents, because I don't think teachers become teachers because they're like, I'm going to be rolling mm -hmm. in six figures. They go in there because they're like, I want to change someone's life, you know, but right. we just don't place the value in the right place. Right. Mm -hmm. America's 
mentality is a bit warped. I mean, the, to claim to be so, they always claim to be so powerful, so rich, so this, so that, but, but the, the power, mindset, what yeah, the mindset the is only, it's only in the money. Only- the mind and what they think and how they value things is totally warped. And this pandemic has totally shown that what's important to them. Teachers are not important to them. Essential workers are important to them. Even us as citizens, we're not important, so to speak, to get tests. Old, old people, yeah. Um, you, yeah. minorities, you can run, go through the checklist. Right. Every right. new cycle has something that re- re- reminds you, oh, okay. Yeah, and if you try to debate them on it, they, it's like a, it's like a, it, it's it's worthless. It's wasted energy right. because you can't you can't speak anything into them that will make them see clearly or understand. It's like they they're very stubborn. They have these values, and that's it. And they're they refuse to be open minded about it. And wrapping up the show, are there any other words of encouragement you'd like to share with our audience? <laughs> do so we talked about we talked about everyone so wrapped up in me and I think that's true and one of the things that I have been reflecting on is this concept of power and everyone wants power and power is not necessarily a good thing I mean a bad thing what's the problem with power is that we use power to try to control other people instead of how to control ourselves Mm -hmm. so we use power to control ourselves Mm -hmm. here I go being that woo-woo friend again I feel like once you like but once you learn to control yourself you influence the environment around you as opposed to you trying to strong arm other people like even when I like was like okay you know what I can't control that this is what I can control and then just things just shifted you know energies just shifted people reacted differently Mm -hmm. so when you learn to use power to control yourself as opposed to trying to control other people, other people right. things work more in your favor, you. actually way more quickly mm-hmm. and way more positively than you trying to inflict it on someone else. So, very and so, I think, yeah. so I think with that being said, like, yes, okay, if you're going to be so self-centered, go ahead and be self-centered and use mm-hmm. this power <laughs> to control who you are. <laughs> exactly. EJ, what do you have to say? Well, and I'm going to piggyback right off of uh, what Vanessa said, because I think that's what, 2020 is teaching all of us. Yes. This pandemic forced everybody to stop, mm-hmm. pause, reflect. I think we've all spent way more time with ourselves, reflecting on ourselves and what matters mm-hmm. this year than ever. Um, and I think I'm very much so a believer in energy and you can't shift the energy um, elsewhere until you've shifted the energy within, right? And once you yes, shift it, exactly. you project it out, right? So I think... Exactly. Um, And the one thing I would also say is patience. Um, We're very impatient as a people all over the world, right? But Mm -hmm. let's find a way to tap into and respect every single thing that happens in our lives and trust the journey and be patient. Trust the journey and be patient. Don't freak out. Don't panic. It's going to be okay. But ask yourself, what is the universe trying to tell me right now? And what am I supposed to do with my time right now? Right. And do what it is that you feel called to right now. Because 2021, we're going to be busy again. We're going to be hustling again. The streets are going to be busy again. There's a reason and a purpose for what we're going through now. Oh, I agree. That, that was I agree. fantastic. And then ladies, where can people find you on social media? You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Agency Abron, a, um, that's Abron, A, B as in boy, R-O-N as in Nancy, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay, EJ? And you can find me Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, at my Y agency. So my Y, M-Y-W-H-Y agency. Ladies, this has been, this has been fantastic. Can you believe- Thank you, ladies, so much. Continue to have a blessed weekend. I will be... Keeping in contact with you, ladies. Awesome. Thank you. I can't get home yet, but I'll be out there soon. <laughs> God willing. <laughs> Thank you. Take, Take care. your time. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Take care, ladies. Have a great one.